The margins on my farm, when I looked at the economics, it was, an, it was like the reverse of economy of scale. Like, the smaller you are, the better your margin is. It's kind of bizarre, but since we're selling everything directly, you know, I don't need to do volumes to have the same price for what I'm growing. But it was also about looking at expenses and expenditures. We've looked at the, the expense side of farming. And we were trying to figure out how can we, you know, try to maximize production and minimize expenses. And so the biggest expense on organic farms, labor. 50% of your production costs is labor. And so, you know, we knew that because we kept hearing these veteran growers saying, oh, I wish I was making, you know, my, my, my employees, they make more money than I do. And I, I heard that so many times in conferences, and it was like, well, I don't, I, you know, I'll go work for you then, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and so we knew about that. I mean, that was one of our ish, initial thought about keeping the farm small, minimize reliance on outside labor. The other thing is that by farming with hand tools, we've just kept our capital outlay really low. You know, we grow for $100,000 you know, $100, per acre with these tools. S simple stuff. And that was our investment, our initial ins investment for pretty much everything that we needed on the farm, equipment-wise. Comes down to about 40 grand. 40 grand, okay, give, it's a, it might be a lot of money when you're in your early 20s and you don't have a lot, but, you know, if you get a loan at 10% because you don't have any credit, you can get, you know, five years payback, you'll pay eight, eight grand per year, which is really not a lot compared to how much money you can make if you're producing uh, intensively. So it's digestible, okay? That's what I'm trying to say here. Some of the tools that we use on the farm, uh, precision seeders, obviously, when I started farming, it's no joke, my girlfriend, she would put the carrots and all the seeds we would plant by hand. We knew, we knew nothing better than, than going, like, and, and we're trying to go as fast, we would time ourselves. And then we got the Earthway, and I was like, whoa, that's much better. And then we got the Glazer Cedar, this one, that was like a million times better. So these cedars, they're not, you know, the greatest cedars in the world, but they work. The, the Earthway doesn't work with small seeds, it tends to get jammed in the mechanism. But the glazer works really well with small seeds. So the two of them together, you can pretty much seed everything that you need to seed. This is another seeder. It's called the Jang seeder. This is a more expensive seeder, more precise seeder, more versatile. It's a quality seeder. It's like a 500% upgrade on the Earthway. So one thing that we've been always doing, and I, you know, it's, it's not a great, great solution to all the problems, but it helps, is that when you're using these cedars, you kind of never know if it's working. And, you know, sometimes it's just a short calibrating that changes the whole, you know, density. And so we always measure the seed package before and after. That tells us how much seed that we've put in the ground. And again, since all of our beds are standardized, we've calculated that information once. We have know, for example, that 70 ounce of carrots is the optimal density for carrots in our bed. So we have that target now, and so we measure this, and if we're off target, we can adjust and calibrate accordingly. Otherwise, if you're waiting three weeks to know, well, you kind of lost three weeks in a short season. So that's the way we do this. This is the six row seeder. This one does 12 rows on 30 inch. So that's high density. We use it for salad mix and baby carrots in the spring. This is a seed bed roller. Again, these cedars, they work if the beds are well prepared. Well prepared means the top inch is refined into finer soil. It is firmed and leveled and raked so that there's no debris. And then the cedars will work. If you have rocks, rake them out. If you have leftover cover crops, you have a problem. Because they, they'll, you know, the branches or whatever, 
it'll, 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 they'll, they'll jam the mechanisms of the seeder. So these are tools to do fine seedbed preparation. That's, we use it for inside the greenhouses and the hoop houses because we don't bring the, the walking tractor inside the, the hoop houses. So that was kind of my question. If you went over that with the power arrow, which has the wheel, yeah. you still need to do it over with that. Okay, well, the problem is, how are you going to turn the harrow at the end? You'll have to leave a space for that, and this is expensive space. Like, in hoop houses and greenhouses, you should see these space as very, very, very valuable square footage. Right, but you don't have to use it on the outside rows. No. The arrow does the job for you. Yeah, outside. Inside, I don't want to lose space uh, at, the, at the end, and my beds should be 12 inch inside pathways, not 18, to maximize the space in the houses, okay? So when we're using the cedar, you need to mark your rows. Okay, and the reason is they don't need, you know, they don't need to be straight rows. <laughs> Probably with somebody asking me a question, I was like, what? And then you just, but it needs to be symmetrical because the next step is to cultivate the soil to get the weeds before they get a problem. So when you're hoeing and you're doing this efficiently and fast, you're eyeballing one row on your bed. So you're really going fast because you're eyeballing one row. And if you're eyeballing one row, you need to assume that the tool is not in the other row. So that's why you need to have, you know, symmetry. That, that is important. So we have like plastic tubes that I carry in my pocket and then I put them however I want on my bed prep rake, 30 inch bed prep rake, five rows, four rows, two rows, one row.